Alhamdulillah <laughs> Uh, Alhamdulillah, if you can hear me, you can type one. Uh, Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought us together for learning the hadith of the day. And, and before even we learn the hadith for the day, a question is, why should I study hadith sciences? Right? So we go back to the Quran and we find in Surah Al-Hashr, verse number 7, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ And whatsoever the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives you, take it. وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And whatsoever he forbids you, abstain from it. So my question from all of us is, will I be able to know what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us to do or stopping us from if I do not study? Uh, the hadith sciences. Go ahead and type yes or no. Alright, so if he would like to know what Rasulullah told us to do, and if Rasulullah, you know, what is something that Rasulullah told us to stay away from, we definitely would need uh, the hadith sciences. Yes, the question is, will we be able to know what Rasulullah told us to do and told us to stay away from without learning the Hadith sciences? Yes or no? We'll be able to know that. So the answer to this question is that no, we will not be able to know that unless we know Hadith sciences, right? So we need Hadith sciences to know about uh, you know, the Quran and the, the Sunnah, right? So, Alhamdulillah. So here, uh, you know, the success package from me and my creator is that Quran and Sunnah is our way to Jannah, inshallah. So we will elaborate and see what exactly is Quran then and where does Sunnah fall into and where does the Hadith sciences fall into. Right? So we all understand that Quran is the primary source of Islam. Right? The literal spoken word of God, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It contains the exact and pure words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Alhamdulillah. And we all reflect on the ayahs. If the Quran has five rights that we uh, try to follow, we believe in it, we recite it, we try to understand it. Then we try to apply it in our life and then we pass it to others. But what is Sunnah, right? So what is Sunnah? Sunnah is Prophet Sallallahu call, which is like his statement, his words, his action, his amal, or taqreed, like his approval. He saw something happening and he approved of it. Or he saw something happening and he stopped from it. So this is, um, you know, uh, all part of Sunnah. And what is hadith? Hadith is the second source of Islam. Unlike the Quran, hadith is preserved by humans and not directly by God, right? They are a chain of narrators, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, when they would listen to what he would 
he would say, or they would observe him doing something, they would share that. And that's where the Hadith sciences comes into picture. Linguistically, it means speech, narration, report, or news. Hadith refers to a narration or a report that Prophet it's basically a narration or a report of a sunnah of the Prophet right? It also refers to the Prophet's reaction to or silence in response to something said or done by others, right? So it's more like a compilation of all the written um, actions and his words and wherever, uh, you know, he approved or disapproved of something. Hadith sciences has a lot of components in there. Uh, you know, there are sermons which are preserved there. There are statements, teachings, prophet approvals. There's laws. There are manners, morals, ethics character traits, physical features, personal behaviors. There is so much to learn out there. And may Allah SWT put barakah in our time. And may Allah SWT, you know, help us, you know, uh, uh, you know, gain a lot and lot of wisdom by learning the hadith sciences, inshallah. Right? So at the end, what I want you to walk away with is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah jalla jalala is our creator. Right? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our role model. Right? So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stands as a sacred role model for mankind to emulate and follow as he was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an example of how one should live life to the best of his her own ability. How many of us would like to uh, you know, live our life at its best? Go ahead, type one, if you would like to live your life at its best. You want to live life as, you know, uh, which which leads you to the best of this dunya and the best of the hereafter. Alhamdulillah. Then this ayah from the Quran is right in front of us that there has certainly been for you in the Messenger of Allah an excellent role model, a pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. So we make an intention right now that we, when we will walk through the hadith sciences, then inshallah when we will reflect on a hadith, then inshallah we will look forward to applying it in our life and then uh, making our life very, very valuable. Before we actually do that, I want you to understand that there are some you know, key components of a hadith. And I'm going to share two key main parts of a hadith. One of them is Isnad. These are the chain of people who narrated the hadith, right? So this, the hadith is preserved through chain of people. And the, the second part is the matan, the actual text of the narration. And scholars of hadith, they impose strict qualifications on these narrators. So, so as much as we believe that, you know, the Quran is the word of God and it's preserved there, the hadith scientist is a huge field. And a lot of care has been taken in preserving, uh, you know, uh, the life of the best man who ever walked this earth for us. So let's go ahead and start looking at hadith number one and see uh, what we can take away from that. You have notes, you have beautiful, uh, you know, note sections. So go ahead and we're going to take a lot of reminders from us just by reflecting on this one hadith. It starts here, Anzaid bin Sabit. Allah, uh, Zayd bin Sabit radiallahu anhu, he said, Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings be upon him, he said, all right? <laughs> okay, all right, so Rani, I'm going to slow down. So what I read so far, what I read so far is nothing but the chain of narrators. So you can skip on that, inshallah. And this is just to show you that the hadith sciences is uh, a, a very well-researched field, all right? So I'm going to go directly to the text of the hadith, and let's see what are we getting from that, inshallah, okay? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that nadarullahu, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause his face to shine. The man who hears what I say and conveys it to others. All right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause his face to shine the man who hears what I say and conveys it to others. 
there are those who have knowledge but no understanding and there may be those who convey knowledge to those who have who have more understanding of it than they do so right now we are just reading it but inshallah we are going to you know go part by part to see what is going to be a take away from here uh, one of the narrators ali bin muhammad uh, anhu, he added to it there are three things because of which hatred does not enter the heart of a muslim Number one, sincerity in doing an action for the sake of Allah. Right? Ikhlasul amalil lillah. Okay? So you don't have to uh, worry too much about the texture, but let's focus on our action item here and we will go to it very shortly. Number two, being sincere towards the rulers of the Muslims and adhering. And number three is adhering to the jama'ah. And this is recorded in the book of Hadith known as Ibn Majah. Alright, now let's look at some key takeaways from this beautiful Hadith of the Prophet If you are ready to note down some lessons for yourself, there are a lot and lots of lessons. And I, you know, urge you that towards the end, you know, another three, four minutes, you should be typing, uh, you should be typing some lessons here as well. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. I love the way, MashaAllah, you are helping each other as well. Yes, exactly. The first part is the Ismat, and the second part is the Matan. Just like I told you that the first part is where the chain of people who narrated the Hadith, this is another science where it's very strictly enforced by the scholars of Hadith. They make sure that we are, you know, you are reading the correct Hadith and the references are authentic. And then this is the actual part of the narration. All right, Alhamdulillah. So let's go and let's start taking some takeaways from this. And as I said towards the end, you are going to share some takeaways as well. So the first takeaway that we see here is, if you can see, I think I uh, colored it, but somehow the color is not showing here. So let me see if I can color it for you right now. I have the highlighter. So the first part tells us, okay, let me see if I can change the color. All right, so this is Rasulullah is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause his face to shine, right? So ladies and lovely girls, lovely seekers of truth, how many of us would like that our face be shining? Type one, if you would like your face to be shining uh, without any facials and, you know, chemical bleach and <laughs> polishes and all kind of, you know, parlor treatments, right, sometimes which have different effects. If you would like to do that, to look at this beautiful hadith, well, all you need to do is you have to hear and then you have to share a hadith. Can we do that? Yes or no? Can we hear a hadith and pass it forward? Yes or no? What do you think? Alhamdulillah. All right. So inshallah, if you would like your faces to shine, one of our key takeaways from this hadith is that inshallah, now going forward, I will look forward to, you know, reading about a hadith, learning a hadith, hearing it, and then sharing it with others, right? Because you can see Rasulullah said, there are those who have knowledge but no understanding. And there may be those who convey knowledge to those who have more understanding of it than they do. You don't know, but your passing of one hadith can change somebody's entire life. Right? So, subhanAllah, we will, you know, our, you know, um, the men in our house are going to be really happy that we are going to use uh, the knowledge of hadith, uh, you know, to make our faces shine instead of, you know, the expensive uh, treatments available out there. Let's look at lesson number two. You see that there are three things because of which hatred does not enter the heart of a Muslim. Go ahead and type one if you would like to have a hatred-free heart. Type one, if you would like to have a hatred-free heart. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So all that me and you need to do is have number one, have sincerity, right? Ikhlas in 
all the actions that we are doing and make it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, if we are here for any other reason, not take like maybe five, six seconds to just recheck on our intentions and say, Oh Allah, make my intentions pure, my words honest, and my actions sincere. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Right? So, Allahumma jal amali kulluhu khalisan. Allah, make all of my actions really pure. Only and only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only and only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And it's, it's amazing how it, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fixes everything else. So this is something that is key takeaway here that me and you will inshallah strive to be uh, honest and sincere. Okay? Let's look at number two for a hatred-free heart. Right? And that is that being sincere towards the rulers of the Muslims. You know, it's cutting off a little bit. I'm not sure if you're able to see the, the Arabic. It says, وَنُسْحُ لِأَئِمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ All right? It takes courage to talk to the leaders. Set them right. If you don't see somebody doing something right, telling them what is right takes a lot of effort, lots of courage. So remember, the deen is nasiha. You know, we get this from Rasulullah also, that the religion is all about advice. And this is one right of a believer on a believer. And I love the way, mashallah, one of you told me that, oh, you're going a little fast. Let's slow down a little bit. That's also nasiha, right? That's also reminding somebody. That's also being sincere towards somebody who is in charge of something. And that's incredible when you are able to do that. All right? Remember, right is right even if no one is doing that. And wrong is wrong, even if everyone is doing that. So inshallah, going forward in our life, we will try our best to give a sincere advice, whoever you know is speaking out it, out it, or giving it to our leaders, right? And you know, let's, let's talk about, you know, we sometimes do a lot of table talk, but we don't write that advice. So please, next time you visit some place, you go at a, place and you don't say something right, go ahead, write your comment. Put it in writing. That has a long term effect, inshallah. All right? And my third lesson from here, from this hadith, you know, um, and that will be the final lesson from my side, and you will be sharing a lot of lessons after that, is, yes, how would this second point apply? If this applies, that when you see, uh, you know, somebody, uh, you know, in charge and you know, see something not right, you should be reaching out and you should be giving a sincere advice at that time. Though maybe we should do it like this or maybe we should do it like that. Just like right now, some of my admins will be reminding that, oh, we have limited time and we need to, you know, wrap it up. So that's Nasiha, giving a sincere advice. And number three thing is adhering to the Jama'ah. And there, you know, we have it in the Quran as well that be united. Hold fast all of you together to the rope of Allah and be not divided among yourself. And this itself is a huge topic. The Jama'ah is a huge topic. And remember that divided we fall and united we stand. So, so inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be united in our homes, you know, in our, you know, workplaces as a team because teamwork is dream work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us apply this in our life, inshallah. So these are some references for you which we can benefit from, inshallah. But at this point in time, this is your time, right? So what did I learn today from this hadith is the question. So the question is, what did I learn from the hadith? And the more you share, the more uh, you learn, and the more you are able to act upon it. So. If you are able to hear me, let's type one. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So I think the presentation is kind of, you know, like stuck here. But go ahead and type if you have any other lesson or any other, um, you know, thing that you took away for yourself. Then go ahead and you can type that, inshallah. And um, the question is, what did I learn today? All right. So when you come to Hadith Sciences, we will learn it, we will live it, and then we will share it. Okay. So for the Hadith number one, I am not asking you to memorize, uh, you know, thing here, but in going forward, some of the Hadith, I'll highlight some points, and you can definitely memorize those as well. Uh, you to make your 
faces shine even more brighter. And a reminder for all of us, walas inna insan ala fi khus illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr. Indeed, mankind is in loss except for those who believed, who did the righteous deeds, who reminded each other of haqq and who reminded each other of sabr. So, jazakillah khair wa asmal jazah for being here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah. 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 So we have, alhamdulillah, learned quite a bit. We've had many beautiful sessions and learned many lessons. So who is now ready for a short quiz to test our knowledge? Alhamdulillah, first one.